Hello and welcome to TDM Talk Show. Red wine is seen as a status symbol drink among Chinese high society. Around 80% of the wine drank in China is estimated to be red. And China has surpassed Japan as Asia's largest wine consumer. Young Chinese consumers are also now showing a preference for imported wines. Wine producers from all over the world are targeting this ever-growing market. Portugal is one of Europe's wine powerhouses. Today with us, we have representatives from one of Portugal's most famous wine regions. They are members of the Duro Boys, a group of winemakers that has been making a worldwide impact. Here with us today is Cristiano Van Zeller from Quinta do Valle de Maria and Dirk van der Nipuort from Nipuort Vinyush. Mr. Van Zeller is responsible for a considerable portfolio of a very fine wines. He describes himself as a wine yard collector. Mr. Nipuort has a significant family name that has been synonymous with winemaking integrity since 1842. And welcome to our show today, uh, to Mr. Van Deller as well as Mr. Nipport. Shall we start with a question by asking you, what do Duru boys mean? Um, hello, Tiffany. Thank you for, for, for inviting us. The Duro Boys um, is a group of wine producers from mm -hmm. the Douro, mm -hmm. the region that produces port. And uh, we have formed uh, a group uh, for promoting uh, the wines that we all produce. There's five producers, uh, Quinta Valdona Maria, myself, uh, Dirk Nieport with Nieport Wines, Quinta do Crasto, mm -hmm. uh, Quinta do Valado, and Quinta do Valmião. We're not only producers, we're also friends. Uh, some of us are family, some are intermarried. So we, very naturally, we have the same objectives, of um, quality and of producing quality and of producing enjoyment, enjoying ourselves doing it and uh, with the wines that we produce, giving enjoyment to, to everybody else. So it was a very natural thing to get together to promote our wines and our region. Mm -hmm. So for Mr. Nipport, uh, like do you like what's the reason that you see uh, like you join hands with five different uh, produce <coughs> wine? Well, from the beginning, I always thought that uh, if we are more people together mm -hmm. sharing a passion and showing it to the world, mm -hmm. I think we can achieve a lot more. Mm -hmm. And from the beginning, I always shared um, not only experiences, but also journalists or buyers. When, when we had people visiting the Doro, <coughs> I always invited uh, friends to come around and show their wines to the buyers or journalists. And I thought that it is very important that as a group, mm -hmm. then we were not an official group like we are now, uh, that we as a group become a lot stronger message and we can show uh, uh, in a bigger, better way what the door is all about. Mm -hmm. I and, see. and from that simple way of doing things, Cristiano and myself, we sat one day together and we started thinking about maybe we should do something a little bit more professional, more organized basically. Uh, Cristiano is very important in this issue because he, he, he I'm is big. the... That's why I'm important. He's the biggest link. <laughs> uh, no, it, it is... Uh, Cristiano helped Crashto uh, in the beginning. Uh, you know, all the beginning of the commercial side and also the wine side and this view of actually doing something because it's, it's quite interesting. Now it looks like an obvious thing to do Doro wine, but mm -hmm. when we started, uh, nobody was doing it. And Cristiano had this vision of, of going out uh, and showing the potential of the wines. And so he started actually building the commercial side of Quinto do Crasto. Mm -hmm. After that, Quinto do Valado and mm -hmm. Valmiang has a big link, family link to all the others. So suddenly, you know, just talking, we thought maybe we should do something in a more professional, organized way. And mm -hmm. at that time I was married to Dolly Moore and mm -hmm. she is, uh, I think, we think, the best PR company person in the world. And so we put the project in 
to her, her hands and, um, and, and she's still doing it. Mm -hmm. She's keeping us together and um, she's doing a good job. So everyone knows uh, one another basically in yeah. the five producers. It's families. We, we are all um, the descendants, the current mm -hmm. generation of the, some of the oldest families dealing in port. Um, dating back to the 17th century or 18th century. My, 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 my family uh, was of Dutch origin and we went to Portugal in the 17th century at the end and we started trading in port right in the 18th century. Uh, Dirk's family was also Dutch and went uh, to Portugal in the 19th century and um, the, the family of Quinta do Crasto uh, was, has been linked to the port also for many centuries, uh, the, the Roquette family. Um, the Ferreira family was one of the most famous uh, port uh, families in mm -hmm. Portugal who are now the owners of Valado and Quinta Valmião, some of the, the, the descendants, were also uh, pioneers uh, through Don Antonio Ferreira uh, in the door of producing port and selling port. And it was an opportunity when the new generation, for many reasons, saw, we saw ourselves without our traditional port firms. Mm -hmm that our families sold throughout the 20th century. My family sold out in, 19, we sold out in 1993 and um, I had to, to uh, I wanted to do something else within the wine trade and as Dirk explained, the Ferreira family sold their port business in, in 1980s. Um, uh, the Roquette family sold their port business in the 1950s. So there was, we, but we all kept mm -hmm. properties. So right. we sold the business, but we kept the, the land, or part of us kept the land. So there was an opportunity with the land and the vineyards that we owned to do something and go out and, and be creative. And uh, we've, in, back in the 80s, uh, the two of us, we talked a lot. We were friends for a long, many, 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 many years. Too Since many. Since the beginning. Yeah, Since the beginning, <laughs> whenever that was. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we, and, and others, we talked about these ideas of developing the region. You have to see that uh, the Douro has lived on port. The Douro is the port area. So port is the main the main, uh, the main wine. wine, yes, and the most important one. Okay. And one of the great wines of the world. And we are port makers. We are port producers. Um, and um, I like to say that we have mm -hmm. 2,000 years of history. Yeah. 2,000. 2,000 years of making bad wine, except <laughs> for the port. <laughs> except for the port, yes. Okay. And, and really, the, the, I th this is my view of the whole thing, is that uh, the last 300 years, the priority was port. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and I always said to myself that uh, if we really want to make mm -hmm. good wine, we have to have two pri priorities. I say two priorities with, because it means you have to be able to do both at the same time. It, in some cases, if necessary, you have to have two wineries or you have to have enough equipment and possibility of picking grapes at the same time for port and, and uh, the wine. Right. And this is what really changed in a dramatic way. Uh, port was the thing. And so the port was picked and with the leftovers, the wines were made. Right. And obviously they were not particularly good. That's why the but past how, was not so great. But how different are they uh, in terms of red, white, and port wine? Like mm -hmm. they have three categories, but... Same area. Okay. Same, same vineyards. Same areas, same vineyards, same grapes, grape varieties. Um, the difference is uh, we know what are the best vineyards for port. Mm -hmm. And now we are trying to find out which are the best vineyards for, for white wine and for red wine. Having said that, um, the picking is important. Uh, there's, there are differences, and that's why I insist on the priorities. The picking uh, in terms of picking of the time of picking, time is, of very picking. is very important. Oh, okay. If you we want to make a red mm. wine, you probably want to pick it a little bit earlier. I see. Uh, for port, uh, acidity seems to be less important. For wine, acidity is major important. For a white wine, it is very, very important. Let me explain to you one thing, mm -hmm. and this is very important because we, we believe one of the great thing about the Douro is that we are actually in a position mm -hmm. where we can make the best, one of the best wines of the world, which mm -hmm. is the port and we can make some of the best white wines and some of the best red wine. It's very unusual to have three great wines in mm -hmm. one area. Mm -hmm. But the Douro is a big area. We're talking about 45,000 hectares. So it's of huge. Vineyards. Of vineyards. Mm -hmm. of vineyards. Um, 
It is also different from the classic vineyards, which usually are um, south exposure, a little bit east-west. Usually it goes from 80 to 200 meters. Usually there's one to three varieties. <coughs> Not the Doro. The Doro, we're talking about eight to 800 meters height. Mm. The expositions can be anything. So we have north exposition, south, east, west, and we have 85 different varieties. Right. So it's a complicated matter. But I like to change the complicated for complex. Okay. Uh, but since we, we know exactly what we're doing for port, this is our challenge. Uh, and it is becoming better because we are getting to know the, the vineyards better and better, is to understand the potential that is there and what we can do with it. And uh, it is fantastic. Uh, because there is so much we can do. I think we are still in the beginning. The potential is just huge. And 85, you're talking about red wine, white wine, as well as port. Then no, 85 is authorized. The uh, varieties, the, the grape varieties. Um, we have no Cabernet, we have no Merlot, we have no Chardonnay, we have no Sauvignon Blanc. That's all the brands that I've heard before. Yeah. <laughs> we have Portuguese names. Okay. We have Portuguese original grape varieties. Um, Toriga Nacional, Alfa, Tinta Amarela, Souzão, Tinta Francisca, Alvarilhão, Rufet. I could go on and on and on in a list of names you've never heard of. Right. Um, Do they which, stand for any meaning? Um, some of them, yes. yes. Okay. Sometimes it's better not to translate the meaning. Okay. But it, sometimes <laughs> it's better not. We have one called Burrado de Mosca, which is, uh -huh. translates into fly drip, but who, okay. who wants <laughs> to know about that, you know? But that's for a white grape variety. It's not very used anyway. But, right. um, or a dog strangler, it's another one. But any could... reason why you put Portuguese name instead of having it called Chardonnay? No, 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 no. No, it's no, it's, different not, it's different variety. It's not the name that it's is different. It's not the names that changes. Ah. It's the, 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 the physiological and the ADN of the grape variety, which is very, it's completely ah. different. It's different grape variety. I think Portugal mm -hmm. uh, was isolated uh, mm -hmm. for economic reasons, for political reasons, mm -hmm. uh, for the last 100 and something years. Mm -hmm. Um, and became poorer, mm -hmm. uh, there was no money, it was closed from the outside. And so uh, a lot of vineyards were not replanted like okay. in, in the north of Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I like to look at it, sometimes you know bad things can turn into a good thing mm -hmm. because uh, Portugal is sort of a hidden treasure because yeah. we have mm -hmm. what nobody else has mm -hmm. anymore. Everybody has ripped out, everybody has changed. Uh, you know, in Germany uh, people are um, find it strange that we have so many varieties and that we plant mixed uh, vineyards. In the past in Germany they used to have mixed vineyards as well. Mm. They just just don't remember it. But uh, the old-fashioned way of working in the Doro was to plant 25 different varieties in the same plot. Yeah, right. uh, and the, but there was an empirical reason to do it. Uh, so depending on the area, depending mm -hmm. on the terroir, mm -hmm. The, the, the blend of the varieties mm -hmm. is different. And so we, we like that very much. Uh, it is complicated in our days to work like that because it's, as from an engineering point of view, you cannot control it as well. So you have, actually have to look closer and do a better job. But it's one way to work. And as I mentioned the word complex, um, we want to believe that our wines are more interesting because of this fact than Chardonnays and Cabernets mm -hmm. and all these things. I see. And for Mr. Van Seller, like what makes Duro the top uh, region among all other regions of Portugal, Portugal. to provide okay. the top quality? Um, if, first of all, Port has been and was the most important wine mm -hmm. and, uh, that Portugal has produced mm -hmm. in centuries. One of the best wines of the and world. And one of the best wines of the world. So um, that has a, a created a leading role, an international leading role. Port, um, expo the exports of port uh, represent 90% of the sales. And it all, they always had. Mm -hmm. So it's an international wine. It's a wine that has grown out of our own borders. And uh, so Portugal was isolated, as I mentioned before, yeah. except for port. Port was something which was treated as a ambassador mm -hmm. for the world, not for the Portuguese. It was for export. Yeah. Uh, and so it created a leading role immediately. Um, this, with the same grapes producing, I want just to 
do a little uh, explanation about the difference of what we call Douro wines and what we call port. Port is a fortified mm -hmm. sweet wine. Yeah. Uh, and the Douro wine uh, is, with the same grapes, a dry wine. So we ferment all the sugar into alcohol for Douro wines, like normal red everywhere around the world. And port is fermented only to a certain point. We add grape brandy to stop the fermentation, creating uh, what is port. Uh, it keeps it fortified natural, wine. fortified wine, keeps it natural sweetness. Um, so with the same quality grapes, they allowed us, working them well, to produce wines that had that uh, power, um, power in, the, in, in an elegant sense. Um, just like me, you know, with power in an elegant sense. I like that, I like but that. Elegant. Elegance, beautiful elegance. But, but all this power, but all this elegance and this uniqueness of, 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 of richness that this diversity of flavors all these grapes give to our wines. And very soon, with the name of the region itself that Port has created for it, um, we were able to um, be recognized as a, a leading region in, in wine, Portuguese winemaking. <coughs> so um, the quality is there and it's recognized, and at the same time, the, the weight of the region, and we were able to multiply that weight um, to, to, to form a leading region in Portuguese international image for, for wine. I see, and for Mr. Nipport, um, like for wine lovers, like what can, that can they expect out of Duro wines? Well, as uh, Cristiano mentioned, um, the Duro produces wines which have quite a lot of tannin, right? a lot of concentration, uh, also a lot of character because of the mixed uh, varieties. But I think what uh, makes the Douro so special, or the Douro wine so special, is there seems to be a great balance. Um, it is a hot climate area in some ways. Uh, it produces wines that are, have a little bit higher alcohol than normal, uh, but usually you don't feel it. Uh, there is a balance due to acidity, due to, to the soils. Um, as we would say, terroir does make a difference. Uh, and, and also, as we said before, the Douro is a big area. Um, and there are big differences also within the Douro buys. Uh, we are five producers making five totally different styles. Mm -hmm. And even in my house, we make another three different styles. <coughs> but even though uh, we make such differences. Uh, I believe one could find a very clear line that they are all Dodo, and that line is, is harmony and balance in the wines. So and many... also I think very important is, I think the wines from Dodo are very age-worthy. Uh, mm -hmm. They have a huge potential for keeping mm -hmm. and getting better with age. I see. So how many types in total, like in terms of the different types of wines? that comes together with we five. Produce, with the, oh. um, Talk about the two extremes. Valmian makes two wines. Two reds, two, well, reds. two red wines and, and one port. And one port. Mm -hmm. And I'm the most You're messy the, one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I don't want to count how many different wines we make because it's far too many. So you don't keep many. track of uh, the number of uh, wines? Uh, yes, we do, but uh, I don't really want to look at it because uh, everybody accuses me of making too many wines. <laughs> <laughs> I must confess, yes, I make too many wines, but I cannot stop it. But again, they are different from one another. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, yeah. The idea is that with, with this huge diversity, just a, a, a little fact which is very interesting. Portugal has more or less four and a half thousand vegetable species, from oh. herbs to flowers to trees, etc. Um, three and a half thousand of those, or more, more or less three and a half thousand, are you can find in the Douro. In a small area of 250,000 hectares of land in that beautiful valley, it's such a richness and a wealthy diversity. biodiversity that it was, not only, it was only natural that the diversity of the grape varieties would survive. And that's where the region where you see the most grape varieties planted. And this creates, together with the soil, the, the terroir, the different locations, etc., an opportunity for to find little niche uh, places to produce wines completely different from one another with great complexity. 
And we don't see ourselves as artists, that's far exaggerating. We're just winemakers. Um, but we love to get the, the essence of each of the, each corner. And it's a passion for the place and a passion for the wine that makes us look for the uniqueness in where we can find it. So when Dirk says he makes far too many wines, it's his search for this beauty of diversity um, in, and the richness that we yeah. can, we, and you can only find them by trying, making them, and offering them to, to the consumers or to, to, our, to, our, to our friends. It sounds like making perfumes. <laughs> with like in a way. There, there, like, is, yeah. a, there yeah. is a connection. Yeah. There is a connection. There is a connection. Yeah. Actually, I'm very much interested in perfumes. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. And teas. He's, he's, uh, he's and also teas. A, a, uh, an importer for tea in, okay. in Portugal. Yes. It's, yes. Can, well, it's aromatics. It's all this search of... Yeah, because aromatics. you mentioned about nose. I mean, it's not about drinking the wine, it's, but it's more towards the aroma. That it's, it's a mixture of well, both. In the portrait, uh, there is the cellar master, which uh, we call the blender. Uh, um, it's the blender in our world is the nose in the in the perfume world. The perfume. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very, very similar. Actually, I have done some tastings with noses. Um, mm -hmm. And it's interesting because it's also a mental and, and the brain thing. It's not only smelling. It's how you assimilate and understand the blending uh, that makes it interesting. And, and uh, the noses I have met, uh, it's very easy to communicate with them because we seem to have a similar approach to the smell of things. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's many links. And so the scent is very important the scent when is it comes crucial. to yes. wine. Yes. And, and it's, it's very funny when you're tasting or when you're smelling a wine before you just put it in your mouth. Um, if you do it with, with your, when you, you do this, yes. if you do it with your mouth open, the, 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 it, the, all the aromas will circulate. If you do it with your mouth closed, you don't get all the essence of what you're tasting. Mm -hmm. it's slightly open and you, it circulates all the aromatics. And, and, That's and you why find. You get people. Uh, yes. Oh, it's a swirly. <laughs> <laughs> but we make horrible sounds strange, when you do the it, tasting. There is a reason, is, is that you want to get air into your mouth. It liberates, it, it just uh, leaves, uh, gets the aromatics a lot stronger out. And you think that drinking wine is drinking, but uh, mm -hmm. probably the most important part of uh, the drinking act is actually the smelling. And that's why also with the glasses, uh, you know, when you see many wine yes. people doing it, like this. Yeah. and, and um, that's to, you know, get the aromatics out. And when you swirl it in your mouth, you're actually helping the, the smelling to, to help you to identify the wine, to the enjoy it. And, and many, many wines, you, you can spend half an hour just smelling it because oh, it's so beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So is that the reason why, like when people order wine in restaurant, like they often pour a little bit and then they will smell no, it and... No, that's due to uh, that's due. <laughs> cork problems. <laughs> well, well, to, make to sure identify if the wine is all right or if it's there's a problem. In good condition. And can yes. you smell and know like uh, what year is the wine being produced? Yes. Uh, we, 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 sometimes we pretend more we know more about that than the reality. It's got to do with memory. Uh, okay. So uh, with, with smells and flavors, it's mm -hmm. got to do with memory, and that's um, if you you wouldn't understand which year it was produced because mm -hmm. you have the memory of what <laughs> you did or what we smelled of that of that time. It's more complex. This that could be a, a full show of conversation. <laughs> but it's part I of see. the fun to it's part of to, fun. to drink wines blindly and and, and play the game. Uh, if you recognize from which country, what variety, varieties, which area, and what vintage. Okay. So talking about Macau, do you think that Macau is actually a well-established market when it comes to wine? Macau has, um, I came to Macau the first time in 1996, uh, not necessarily for, for wine, it was a mixture of, of visit and, 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 and work. Mm -hmm. Then I've been coming quite often uh, to Macau and I've seen a development in the market which is absolutely astonishing, especially in the last eight years. Um, and Macau for us, and for Portuguese wines, and for us specifically the Douro Boys, and for us, uh, we have a great friend and partner here who's helping and developing our brands here, mm -hmm. Tomás Pimento Vino Veritas, um, uh, who's fundamental for that. But we have established a, a very solid base here, 
um, with the quality, to promote the quality, not only sell, but to promote the quality of our wines. And we see Macau uh, as an entry gate to mm -hmm. continental China, um, and, 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 a, and a fundamental one. And, and this, is, this was our first step in our base. We've been, even this, this morning, the, the two of us, we were together for five minutes and we had the chance of talking about it and how we can uh, solidify this base and, and, and develop this base. Um, we were uh, sometime, mm -hmm. uh, we've been in, in, in Beijing, we've been in Shanghai uh, some time ago, and we've been doing a lot of um, sales and promotions, etc. And we're beginning to understand mm -hmm. that uh, how important this could be. So it is. It is but part uh, of our heritage too. But, so but this the, is the link for, for such a long time between two totally different cultures um, has helped uh, that a lot of Chinese have had an opportunity to know and enjoy wine uh, that in China was not possible right. in the past. Of course, time, times are changing in a dramatic way, but. Uh, Macanese people, they, they, they are more used to seeing, uh, tasting, drinking wine than probably in, in China. Uh, so yes, we, we see that Macau is a, is a great starting point. Yes. So how do you see um, the wine culture in China then? Like, What's your opinion on that? Uh, my opinion is that I love Chinese food. Okay. Um, <laughs> And Me too. Yeah. I'm a great I'm, fan. I'm very, very <laughs> fanatic about Chinese food. And, uh, he's a great chef, by the way. Okay. I, don't, I, I don't know how to cook, but uh, he's a I great like, chef. I like cooking. And <laughs> uh, I see a huge potential in the connection of the Chinese food with wine. Uh, and, and I don't see with it port. To with port. Also, uh, with port. Not only with the Dora wines, but with, mm -hmm. with port. We uh, have some ideas about that. We've yes. tried. Uh, and I see a, a huge future because I actually find that the, the connection uh, between Portuguese wine and, and uh, Chinese food is very easy. Uh, I don't see it as complicated as. So, what kind of uh, Chinese food uh, will suit? Let, let, let's, let's talk more generically. Uh, our wines have complexity, density. They they have very ripe fruit. Uh, very sweet fruit, dr the dry wines, they're dry, but they have this beautiful sweetness, they have spices, you can find a lot of spices mm -hmm. and a lot of, um, um, I wouldn't say minty aromatics, but that kind of flavors mm -hmm. that mint or, or eucalyptus uh, bring out, which has to do with the region and how um, we, we, where we, we have the wines. And so, all these complexity of flavors go very, go very well and match very well some of the spice and the complexity mm -hmm. of flavors that you get in, 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 in the different Chinese food. Because Chinese yes. food is not they one, have, you know, it's, there's so uh, many dishes, different yes. areas and so many different things you can, you can use. Um, with port, mm -hmm. uh, especially with, um, in, my, in our opinion, with old tony port. Tony right. port is ports that age in oak all their lives, mm -hmm. 10, 15, 20, 100 years. They, these have, uh, and with the sweetness and the complexity, nearly perfume-like flavors of um, uh, Tony Ports, old Tony Ports. And the sweetness, um, they also match some of the spice uh, and the flavors that a lot of different Chinese food. I tried it with dim sum. I had a, I love dim sum. So, uh, um, I have this habit of going to dim sum restaurants as, uh, whenever I can. And there's very, very different things with dim sum, but um, I love to have a chilled, uh, like a white wine, 10-year-old Tony or 20-year-old Tony port with dim sum. Um, maybe if I drink a whole bottle, I'm a bit dizzy at the end of the meal, but <laughs> I had a, a lot of fun with this, this experiment. Also, our wines are very balanced uh, as a style. So I think uh, wines that are too acid uh, uh, have a problem with Chinese food. So oh, okay. even though I like acidity a lot, um, our wines have this richness and concentration, which I think will help the, the link to Chinese food. So port is basically not meant for just dessert. No. It can go along with food as oh, well. There's fantastic links. Oh. So there's many, many yeah. great uh, connections. You can have a steak au poire with a young yeah. port. That uh, was your, my first experience when I was uh, just starting on the port trade. I was 23. Uh, Dirk's father one day invited me and my sister for lunch. 
and he said, we're going to have a young vintage port during the meal. And I said, Rolf, this is impossible, vintage port, yeah. not young, we only drink it old, uh -huh. and um, we, it's only for a dessert. And Dirk's father yeah. said, shut up, you know nothing yeah. about this. Yes. Okay. And he offered exactly this lunch was a steak au poivre, Mm -hmm. With vintage port, a young vintage port. To be more precise, 19, 1984, I was drinking 1980 Nieport vintage port. I can't vividly remember that day. And that completely opened the eyes for the enormous opportunities. This is only one example mm -hmm. for port um, to Chris, be drank crispy, not only as a dessert duck, wine. but uh, with a Tony. Yeah. It was fantastic. Crispy duck, are you talking about picking the picking duck? duck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. With an old Tony. Also, the, another discovery we did recently, we had uh, in Beijing uh, some pepper. Yeah. Um, it was an amazing pepper. I don't know what it was. Uh, no. we uh -huh. Is it the Sichuan type, no? Uh, probably. probably. Um, yeah. I have a bag of it. Okay. <laughs> but I cannot <laughs> read the name. That's my problem. Okay. But the amazing thing is when you eat a little bit of uh -huh. this uh, pepper, Uh, and you melt it in your mouth. Right. Uh, um, it's like everything tickles. Yeah. In your no, mouth. Yes, I think that will be like the Sichuan pepper. But again, drink a port with that, and oh, you are in heaven. I'll have to try that. <laughs> so I would like to ask a question: Like, how can Portuguese wine compete? I mean, uh, when it comes to that, you have famous wines from France, and then you have new makers mm. coming in, like U.S., Chile, even Canada. So, like, how would you differentiate yourself? In terms I, of I, I, showing what? them. Sure. Making people taste yeah. them, because basically, apart from Macau, of course, mm -hmm. uh, uh, nobody knows about the Portuguese wines. Uh, right. So the best way is really what we are doing here. You know, we have been having some tastings recently, and it's basically it's just showing, showing it, and what we have been uh, making an effort as well is showing the combination with Chinese food and showing how easy it is to link it. We, mm -hmm. we, we cannot compete with the volume that some of these new yeah. world make. Right. Um, a, a French friend of mine and producer, Michel Chapoutier, told me mm -hmm. the other day, we were talking about different things and he said, there are two big differences in winemaking. There are the ones that are signatures and the ones that are brands. Mm -hmm. And a brand can be a signature, a signature can be a brand, but the brand can never be a signature. He was referring to old, old world, so European wine, and to New World wines. And uh, we cannot, in Portugal, we are signature wines. We are wines with a lot of personality, with a, a big face, or, or a face in all of them. Like, so are some of the French. Uh, so we cannot compete with Australian, right. New Zealanders, because we don't have the volume, we don't have the costs, we don't have anything like that. But we have a complexity that they will never have in their lives. Um, it's more difficult to compete with France, mostly because of the image that France has than the image that History. and the image we've right. got. Mm. But in terms of flavors, we had a tasting of uh, uh, Doro wines and um, uh, Bordeaux wines. We're talking about first growths and mm. the top, some of the top Doro wines and top mm. Bordeaux, blind from uh, in in Hong Kong last year, and um, the match was such that there was hardly no difference between the quality of one or the other. So we have the quality to match, not to fight against. We have our own space. Uh, we, are, uh, we have been producing wines that are world-class quality mm -hmm. and deserve to be recognized as such. We just need to have people taste them and understand them. So it's a, a long-term job right. to, of promotion and having people to taste and be mm -hmm. um, uh, exposed to the, what we're doing. Just realize how good they are. Yeah. One last question. Um, like, since China is actually uh, growing so much and there are so many uh, wine consumers in China, so have you guys ever thought of uh, setting up a uh, plant to produce wine in China? No. Mr. Nipor? No? <laughs> no, because <laughs> so we are. Any reason? Uh, first, first, we. I think that the. First of all, Um, when you when you are a signature wine, that we feel that yeah. we're a signature wine, this, that signature has to do with our past, and um, and 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 we are developing something which 20 years ago did not exist. Port existed, but the Doro wines did not. So we have, I personally have a lot mm -hmm. of work to do still, um, and my life, I look ahead, a generation ahead. And if I look a generation ahead, I'm closer to the cemetery than, than I am to <laughs> the birthplace at the moment. So 
in the in the short term or in the medium term or even in some longer term mm -hmm. i i don't see that not because there are not there mm -hmm. wouldn't be the opportunities there and it would be a good challenge mm -hmm. to be able to have something there personally i don't have the the time mm -hmm. i i tasted my first chinese wine in 1984 so i have i've been exposed to wine produced in china since the beginning of the 1980s i probably one of the few that has had that opportunity because I had a lot of Chinese friends in Hong Kong and uh, Macau that were opening uh, the, those opportunities for me. And um, I think that it will be very exciting to have these mm -hmm. opportunities. Um, but I don't have the do, money or... <laughs> but does this has got to do with also the temperature, the soil, um, like probably in Portugal it, it will be different? No, it is different. You would have to find the place. You would have but, to but think China Chinese. Is, you wouldn't have to is think a big country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, when you use the word plant or factory, um, <laughs> I, I get a bit uh, nervous because uh, that's exactly what Cristiano said. We make signature ones. Yeah. So we, we don't build a factory. Mass uh, we might build a winery which yes. might look uh, modern and, and so on, but uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not, we don't make industrial wine. Right. Uh, there is a lot of industrial wine, but this is not what Doro is all about, and particularly the Doro the boys. So well. I re react a little bit negatively to okay. that. Okay. <laughs> so thank you very much, uh, Mr. Benzeller, and uh, thank you very much, Mr. Niport, for talking to us today. It it's was a very pleasure. great having Our you pleasure. both here. Our great pleasure. Thank and you. Uh, thank you all for watching. You can read a summary of today's interview in the Macau Daily Times. We will be back next week with another guest. Mm -hmm.